Hello. Hello, everybody. Right off the bat, I have some very potent questions for you as we step into this contemplation of the Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse that's happening on May 5th at 16, is it? 14 degrees, 14 degrees, 57 minutes of Scorpio, May 5th, 1033 AM Pacific time. So you may want to look at where this is happening in your chart in your unique natal chart like what house is it happening in that sort of thing um and we're gonna ask some really potent questions to open up this contemplation and the first main main question to do with this particular energy is what are you ready to let go of What is ready to be released? When we, there's a, you know, always makes me laugh when people are like, let that shit go. And yeah, like what shit are you ready to let go of? What, what are you ready to transform and to see the evolution? You know, like I've, I've walked this chapter enough times. I'm, I'm over it and I'm ready to end this chapter so that whatever new chapter wants to emerge can. So what is it that you're ready to have end? What cycle? Um, and I would be very curious, <laughs> like what, what's popping in your head right now? Like what comes, you know, what presents itself? Um, this first question of what are you ready to let go? What are, what are you ready to release in your life? This was kind of a, a channel and from my spirit guides question that they were asking me, like, what is it that, that you Carly are ready to let go of in your life? And what came was so unexpected, so unexpected because yeah, like when I first even was like entertaining the question or the thought that like, what am I ready to let go of? Instantly, it kind of felt more like people or places or circumstances, you know, that it was going to be like some physical concrete part of my life that was going to shift. And that was what was going to be shown to me. And what came was not that. What I'm ready to release, me personally, my fear of conflict that cycle mm, coming to the most beautiful close I've ever seen where I am no longer going to be a person like the the version of me that is afraid of conflict is dying and the version of me that is not afraid of conflict is being born and so when we talk about what are you ready to release what cycle are you ready to have end in your life? Like there's a, there's a very real point here about this, you know, lunar eclipse eclipses are all about big changes, like big turning points in your, in your story, in your trajectory. And so we have first, the first eclipse is a new moon solar eclipse at 29 degrees of Aries. And that is happening on April 19th. And so that's coming first, this kind of like portal of new beginnings, being able to see possibly a glimpse even of like, what is it <laughs> that is the new version of what's becoming? And then two weeks later on May 5th, we have this full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. So always at the full moon, the moon is opposite the sun. So the sun at the time of this full moon lunar eclipse is in Taurus. So we have this Taurus Scorpio axis being really lit up by this full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio and also very lit up because the lunar nodes are in those signs. And that's actually what makes this full moon the eclipse is that it's happening within 18 degrees fun fact of the lunar nodes that's what makes it an eclipse and that's why because the nodes are so close to the beginning of Taurus they're about to flip into Aries and Libra in 
July of 2023, because they're so close to Aries, that's why the Aries new moon was the first eclipse. And then the full moon in Scorpio is the second one. And by the time we get to the Taurus new moon, that's later on in May, it's not within 18 degrees of the node. So that one isn't an eclipse. We'll be back to regular full moons and new moons at that point. Is this piece of hair annoying anybody else? Just me? Okay. Just had to double check. Um, so these Taurus and Scorpio are fixed signs. That's really where I wanted to go with that piece is that these are fixed energies. And that is the modality of those signs. The three modalities are fixed, cardinal, and mutable. Um, cardinal signs begin things. They're at the beginning of each season. So like Aries at the beginning of spring is a cardinal sign. It's the new life, kind of the spark of life coming into being. And then with Taurus, we get very practical and very fixed in our ability to nurture that spark, to nurture the seed that got planted so that eventually there will be a harvest. And so Taurus has to do with the material security, the physical security, our physical body having what it needs. Um, it's very rooted in the physical. And it's a very simple idea of what is truly important to you. Like that's kind of the Taurus end of the spectrum. What is truly important to you? And at the heart of every single alive creature is what's important to me is staying alive. You know, like one of the most important things for any of us will be survival. And on the flip side of Scorpio, also a fixed sign, it's more, it also has that, that same aspect of security and wanting to know that like the, the foundation is secure, basically, much like the Taurus, like you can't grow a plant in soil that is devoid of nutrients. You can't you know, you can't harvest anything if you don't have the right stuff while you're growing it. And Scorpio is doing something extremely similar only on an emotional level. So Taurus is the physical surface level reality of our lives. And Scorpio is kind of the energetic, emotional substructure underneath what are we choosing in our physical life? Like what's actually playing out on the surface? So with the sun moving through Taurus, that is a huge emphasis. The sun, the sun is like the leader of the meeting. And as the sun moves through each of the 12 zodiac signs, it's like the agenda and the tone and the focus of the meeting, the meeting being our lives and this cosmic soup that we're floating in. The tone of the meeting changes with every time the sun moves into a different sign. So with the sun in Taurus, what's being illuminated for us is our physical security is our physical ability to meet our physical needs. And that, again, is very simple. It's like if you feed the body, if you give it water, you give it, I mean, shelter and safety from predators, like physical security is relatively common in today's modern world. And because of that, we've been much more able to focus on this emotional security piece. And that is kind of the age that we're living in is we don't just want lives that look all pretty and secure on the surface because you may be paying way too much for that security. And let me tell you what I mean by that. That's like, you know, maybe an abused spouse who stays with their abuser because that spouse is the breadwinner. And so like, on the surface, what you're getting is like physical security. You have somebody who's like taking care of you, but behind the scenes, what you're having to pay the cost of receiving your security in that way is that you're receiving this abuse, whether that's physical, emotional, mental, I don't, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Like it's all punishment that you do not deserve, but are putting up with because it's getting you this physical security. So like basically this lunar eclipse this full moon in scorpio that is going to be from the from the underneath side the substructure underneath all of the physical it's going to be shining this light on basically how much does your security cost how much does it cost what does it cost and are you getting a good deal <laughs> do you do you like what you're paying for your security 
Um, and if that's not a good deal for you, then possibly that helps to inform what is it that you're ready to let go of? What kind of pattern within yourself are you ready to see come to an end? And Scorpio specifically very much has to do with the other, you know, Taurus on the end of the self and kind of power within the self and like presence within the self and the physical experience of the self. And Scorpio, this to be able to see the emotional substructure underneath, we're talking about the unconscious underneath the physical. To be able to see our own unconscious, we must project onto another person. And that, I really, let's just draw that out. Like in order to see this, in order to see the unconscious within ourselves, we must project it onto another person. And I really draw that out because there is a negative connotation around projection, like it's bad and that we shouldn't project things onto other people. And like, you want to, you know, deal with it yourself or whatever, but like, what if, what if you don't even know anything is wrong until you've projected it onto the other person and they're playing their part of being the villain and now we're in conflict and now we know for sure that something has gone off course, something is not right. And so that other person and the projection onto the other person, like to kind of ease up a bit about like, don't project, like don't do that, that's bad, that's wrong, we shouldn't do that, like dude, we can't help it. So when you find, <laughs> when you discover that you have projected your own shit onto another person, let that just be a moment for vulnerability and curiosity, you know, vulnerability in that, oh, there's the thing where here's a part of my subconscious that's ready to be recognized because here I am pointing my finger at this other person and saying that they're bad, they're wrong, they should be different, whatever, like we're projecting, we don't like them. And that's because they're representing a fragmented part of ourselves. It's not that we don't like them. We don't like that part of ourselves. And we don't even want to look at it until somebody shows up in our life that has that trait. And then it's so easy to blame every ounce of that tension and conflict onto them when all they're doing is mirroring back the piece of our unconscious that's ready to be seen. It's ready to be seen. That's why they can show it to us. And so the thing about when we're dealing with Scorpio is that other people are going to be involved. That's like a guarantee. Other people are going to show us. So like there's certain part of Scorpio energy that like can't even do its full process. Libra too, I would say without another person. So I want to just kind of like burst the bubble around feeling guilty around projection or like, there I go again, blaming, you know, Republicans or Democrats or like, there I go again, like projecting my own shit onto people. Like skip the part where you're beating up on yourself for that, please, please. And thank you. And get right into the vulnerability and the curiosity. Like, like, you know, when we don't like somebody else or we don't like a certain piece of their behavior, that's like the hardest time to look back at yourself and say like, where is this in me? You know, like why, <laughs> what, what is it in me that I'm battling with myself that this person is helping to show me this inner conflict that I'm ready to become aware of? Why? Because I'm ready to end this cycle. I'm ready for it to be over, you know? And so that's where I come to in what's been brought to me a lot lately are interpersonal conflicts with other people who are relatively unavoidable. So like, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do when you find that, you know, for so long in my whole entire life, I have been so conflict avoidant and so just filled with fear at the first signs of anybody disagreeing with me or anybody being upset, like whether it's with me or about anything, like I just do, I get so terrified and like start shaking and just freeze as soon as the emotional volatility starts rising around me. And 
that kind of physiological experience has kept me out of conflict. It's kept me like avoiding those people that I can't find resonance and consensus with. It's left me, you know, breaking up with certain people rather than trying to like mediate and work through things. Like I just like cut my losses and like walk away. Like so many choices, so many physical choices of like that surface level reality. So much of what is in my life is there because I am conflict avoidant. Like the people who are no longer there or the people who are. Like there is so much that that fear of conflict, that subconscious like backing away as soon as conflict reveals itself that is manifesting things on my surface level reality. And when it comes to like fixed signs, Taurus and Scorpio are two of the fixed signs. The other ones are Leo and Aquarius. When it comes to fixed signs, there can be a tendency to hold on to things like you don't change. That's kind of the whole point is that you're really rock solid. But even the fixed signs are eventually ready for a change. I was thinking about this as far as like, I don't think it's that fixed signs don't like change. It's that they have a very thorough transformation process that happens when you approach change. And so that means that like, you know, a mutable sign is very quick to like make the leap. Like it's literally a leap. Like they make change look easy. That's the whole point of mutability. It's like you're ready to like roll with whatever the wind is doing that day. And fixed is like millimeter by painstaking millimeter to work through the process to take it incrementally. There's no leap. There's there's the process. And, but that to say that eventually, you know, years later, maybe you get to the point where you're ready for the change. And so this lunar eclipse, this this period of faded endings we're going to come back to this word fate because I, I have a whole thing that I want to talk about with fate. But these faded endings that this lunar eclipse in Scorpio are, lunar eclipses always bring about faded endings. But when you think about the south node moving through Scorpio of all signs, there is a deep emotional purge happening within our interpersonal dynamics with other people that are letting us to see things so so much more clearly and in that so differently, so differently. So these fixed energies are ready for a change. And that goes back to that initial question, like what change is that? What are you ready to release? What are you ready to see come to a close? Because you're just over it. Like I've seen this movie 275 times and now I'm ready for a new movie. <laughs> You know, everybody gets to that point where repetition is no longer something that you care to do. And so it's not about like what cycle should you end, you know, like, well, I shouldn't drink every day, so I'm going to end my alcoholism or whatever. Like, that's not at all what we're talking about here. Like the changes and the endings that are ready to unfold will come from a really authentic place of this doesn't work for me. It's not practical, you know, like that Taurus son cares deeply for doing all the steps and taking care of all the steps so that there will be a harvest in the fall. That's the whole point of that Taurus nurturing energy of fixity of like being in one place and being rock solid to nurture the new life so that there will be a harvest. So even Taurus, even, you know, the, the king of does not want to make a change will eventually recognize that there is no harvest from this process. Doing it like this doesn't get me the harvest that I need. You know, Taurus cares deeply about feeding its, itself and its people that it loves, its tribe. And so if there's no harvest, if there's like lack of harvest even Taurus, even the most fixed Taurus will make a change. And so all of that to say, you know, what is working for you doesn't need to change. Like if you're drinking every day, I'm telling this mostly to my past self because I drank every day for years before 
me stopping drinking is still kind of an ongoing process, but like every day for years, I would do that. And I had guilt and shame about it pretty much the whole time. But at the same time, it was working for me where I was at that time, the choices that I had and the situation I was in and the level of readiness that I possessed in that moment, drinking every day was working for me. And eventually it wasn't. And when it was no longer working for me, that's when change was easy. It was easy to see that like, I mean, when I do this, there is nothing to harvest. (laughs) There's nothing to harvest and I need a harvest. So like, okay, fine. Like put that to the side and do something different.